and, and welcome, welcome to, to the Underpaid, Underpaid Gamers, Gamers Podcast. My name is Justin. My name is Tony. And we're here to talk about some stuff today. All right. Uh, so, as per usual, <laughs> Underpaid Gamers Podcast, yeah. uh, we have a news segment and then we have a topic segment. The news segment, uh, we're going to talk about the Black Panther movie. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy 15. We're going to talk about Suicide Squad box office. We're going to talk about... Uh, the International, the Dota 2 Tournament, and we're going to talk about Pokemon Uranium, and then for the topic of the day, we're going to be talking about No Man's Sky, the most anticipated game of 2016 in my opinion, so far, and uh, my thoughts with it. I don't agree. Theme song. <laughs> the Underpaid Gamers is the official podcast of UnderpaidGamers.com. You can find us at Twitter, at UP Gamers Podcast. You can find us at Gmail, at underpaidgamerspodcast, at gmail.com. Find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google, Google Play. Play. There's uh, one more thing. Oh, YouTube. We're on the YouTube. Underpaid Gamers. Yeah. We have a channel. Welcome. Check it out. Yo, 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 yo. What's up? Oh, I have another secret bit of news that I thought was really funny. Uh-oh. Um, have, you ever, have you ever watched uh, Criminal Minds? No. It's very popular. It has like 14 seasons. Holy cow. The main character, uh, Aaron Hotchner, mm-hmm. is an FBI guy, um, mm-hmm. who is played by Thomas Gibson. He's been on it for every season. Seriously? Just got fired. What? Because he kicked a producer. <laughs> <laughs> there was an on-set is awesome. altercation, is what they said. Oh he kicked goodness. somebody, and they're like, you're out of here. I'm like, 14 years. 14 years. <laughs> you're out. I really didn't like Criminal. I watched Criminal Mind. Okay, so this is what happened. I watch Criminal, Mind, Criminal Minds because it's normally about, like... A criminal's mind? Yeah, it's like... So they're in the uh, BAU, I think, Behavioral Analysis Unit. Interesting. And they're always trying to figure out who these killers are, who these criminals are, by the way they act, by the way they talk, by all this stuff. But, but by the way they created, their, they committed their crime. Like, that's a really cool thing to do. That's a cool TV show. So I was watching it all the time. And this is when I was playing Destiny. Mm-hmm. So I'd watch it all the time, and Destiny was very grindy at that point, because it just came out. Um, so I'd have Criminal Minds on my laptop, and I was playing Destiny, wasn't playing with the sound on, because I was doing literally the same thing over and over again. A la Destiny. Yeah. Classic um, first wave Destiny. And then, like, it just, Criminal Minds just kept getting super repetitive, and it was always, this serial killer killed his whole family and ran into the mountains, this serial killer did this to a girl, this and this and this. I'm just like, this is not fun. Not fun anymore. And then halfway through, I, I was halfway paying attention because I was also playing Destiny. Halfway mm-hmm. through, there was like a, a Russian girl that showed up, and then she became part of the FBI, and then she was there for like the rest of the season. So I'm like, I don't remember where you came from or what your story arc is. I don't care about you at all. <laughs> so just a main character that you just have no yeah. affiliation with. So I don't stopped watching it because I very much did not like it after the first couple of seasons. And then I, this popped up on my Facebook news feed that he got kicked out for kicking somebody. I'm like... There it is. That's fun. That's a good that's a good thing to talk about. So for all you Criminal Minds fans out there. That happens. Sorry about that. Mm-hmm. Um I guess I can save that No Man's Sky news for when we talk about it. Yeah, sure. Do you want to talk? I'll give you the option. Okay, talk to me. Suicide Squad box office. Pokemon Uranium. Final Fantasy Fifteen. <laughs> Black Panther movie or the International. Uh let's do Pokemon Uranium. Sweet. So Pokemon Uranium was the game I was playing when we got here. Mm-hmm. I have I have news about which it. is why this is my first question. Uh, fan based game emerges online after nine years of production. Pokemon Uranium adds over two hundred new Pokemon, eight gyms, a new team of villains called Team Nuclear, and a new region. Downloaded over one point five million times. Holy cow! Nintendo of America lawyers contact the development team and demand a removal of all links from their website. Um, while the creators claim to never have received any cease and desist letters, they have received multiple takedown notices. The creators then go on to say that while they don't. While they won't have any direct download downloads on their site, they will still be working on updates for the game, if you can find it somewhere else. <laughs> nice. So it was out for like three days before Nintendo of America lawyers are like, they can't do that. Cut this crap out. Stop it. So like, but it's, these people have been working on this game for nine years. It's out for like three days and mm-hmm. Nintendo's like, hey, cut that out. I'm like, dang, that sucks. It got, got downloaded over a million times. Yeah, once it's out there, it's out there. It's out there forever. Because the torrents. Yeah, yeah, but they can, I assume they can no longer, like... Officially post it on there. their website, yeah. probably not. But So it sucks that they work so hard. But I was playing it, I actually 
I saw it, and I'm like, I don't really want to get into a Pokemon game. Then I saw that they removed it, and I'm like, well, I better download it while it's like is, yeah. Um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, my first thoughts, if you want to get it, go all means. There's a whole bunch of new Pokemon, you have to figure it all out again, so that's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. My first thoughts of it are positive. Mm-hmm. Um, How does it stack up against classic Pokemon games? I mean, I would say it's, I mean, I've only played for a couple hours right now, mm-hmm. so it's kind of hard to tell. Yeah. Um, but the there are major differences. One of them being that you don't get to pick your first Pokemon of the oh. three. Instead, it gives you like a, they call it a Pokemon Trainer Aptitude Test. Oh, nice. The professor does. Classic. So, it he questions you and then he gives you a list of three answers. And the answers are color-coded, so there's a red one, which is normally aggressive, a mm-hmm. green one that's like, whatever you'd be synonymous with a f- grass type, and then yeah, a blue yeah. one, which is like, wise, I guess. Some, yeah, duh. Some BS like that. Squirrel. Um, so it gives you like four questions, and then however you answer those questions, if you answer majority red or the majority green or majority blue, he says, oh, I think this Pokemon would be good for you. And he gives you that Pokemon. So you can, you can predict which one you're going to get. You can still pick them based on mm-hmm. that. And then your rival obviously gets... Uh, my rival actually got the weaker, my weaker type. Really? I think. So my starter is a fire. Of course. It's fire ground. Um, yeah. Which is interesting. That's a new type. And he got a grass something. I don't know what it is. Hmm. But when we battled, I destroyed him. Like, yeah, not even close. He was gone. He was out of there. Dunzo. Um, so that was a lot of fun. And because it's made from an independent developer, mm-hmm. um, they don't necessarily have to follow the same restrictions that a normal Pokemon game would. Yeah. And I almost feel like because I'm not 10 years old, I enjoy this game more than other games. Yeah. It also seems a little bit harder. But when you first start a new game, it asks you, do you want to do a classic game or a Nuzlocke challenge game? Mm. So Nuzlocke challenge is, of course, if your Pokemon faints, you have to release it. I assume it would release it automatically. It would suck. So that's a lot of fun to do, though. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's um, a new way to spice things up a little yeah. bit. So there's a lot of references to old Pokemon games in this one. Specifically, when you leave your house, you're staying with your aunt. Because mm-hmm. your mom... Okay. Okay. Uh, your mom one. dies in a nuclear meltdown. <laughs> oh, no! Uranium. Um, uranium, and then the team is called Team Nuclear, and I assume the legendary Pokemon has to do with... Atomic something. Yeah, Atomic something like that. So she was like the head scientist for this nuclear power plant, which you find out in the intro. Mm-hmm. And then she dies trying to save people. So you're like, that's cool. And your dad is in charge of the Pokemon Rangers, is what he's called. And then he gets, he's depressed and gets all busy. Um, with work. With work. Doesn't so you, he kids. ships you off to your aunt, which is fine, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then as soon as you leave, one of the first people you can talk to is an older gentleman, mm-hmm. about the same age as their aunt. Yeah. And he says... Oh, I see that you're leaving on your Pokemon adventure. I might visit your aunt a, a little bit more often now. Oh, boy. And I'm like, Woof. that's awesome. There it is. Um, because, yeah. one, there's two references to that in the original Pokemon games. Yeah. One, uh, there's a guy that stands outside of the grass gym, Erica's mm-hmm. gym, and he's looking in and he's like, ooh, look at all these dancing girls. Ooh. And they, <laughs> what a weirdo. They changed that in the new versions. But then there's also a, a theory that the reason that Professor Oak sent you and Gary off on your Pokemon adventure and in general, you and Blue, whatever, is that he can spend more time with your mom. Oh, that's so dirty. That's awesome. Dirty. Um, so it was fun to see that. And then I got up to, like, the first big city that has the first gym in it. Mm-hmm. And the gym leader's not in her gym, and you have to go around and figure out where she is. And you talk to this guy, and this guy's like, oh, yeah, she's normally not there, but she's probably in her house. Her house is locked, and I can't go see it. I can't, I can't be around her. I can't be within a certain distance of her because of reasons. He literally <laughs> says because of reasons. And, Corridor, and you're right. like, oh, what does that mean? And he's like, but if you want the key, here you go. Oh my gosh, that's so creepy. The and then, oh and, you're, and you're like, why do you have this key? And he's like, don't worry about it. I have made plenty of extras. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Restraining order. Dude, so that's super funny, and I hope to see more jokes like that. But then also, yeah, it's creepy. there's this new thing called the Pokemon Rangers, as I mentioned before, that your dad's a... A part of mm-hmm. and essentially you get to a point where there's rocks blocking your path you're trying to go from one place to another there's a, po- a random pokemon ranger that comes up he's like hey i'm part of the pokemon rangers i have this special i'm gonna call it a whistle i have a special whistle <laughs> he whistles and these pokemon come down and he's like these aren't my pokemon these are wild pokemon but i can communicate with them and they will do they will do me favors and they'll help me out if i need so mm-hmm. so they move the rocks for him and they just left they went and went back into the wild. So he's like, as Pokemon Rangers, we try to live with Pokemon. We don't try to capture them or make them battle. Mm-hmm. We just want to do favors for each other. I'm like, that's a really cool. Interesting. It's a really cool thing. I know that's one of the things that when uh, people talk about the storylines, there's, there's a little bit of controversy whether or not it's actually good for Pokemon to yeah. be caught and trained and 
if that's really the lifestyle that they should lead. Mm -hmm. Which is kind of ridiculous because it's a fantasy game about little monsters that don't exist. But it's a valid point, I think. Yeah. It's fun that they're playing off that. Anyway, I'm having a lot of fun with it. Um, I'll play it in my downtime. It was a lot of fun. It, I like the jokes that I saw in it. So the one with the old man about your aunt and then the and other the guy creepster. with the key. Yeah. So I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, next, we'll talk about Final Fantasy XV. Sure. Uh, officially announced at E3 in 2006, 10 years ago. Yes. Final Fantasy XIII Versus has taken on a new name in the past couple of years. Now most people will recognize it as Final Fantasy XV. After waiting for 10 years, it has now been delayed an extra two months and will evidently be released on November 29. Mm-hmm. So it's supposed to be released in September. Yeah. And now it's being released in November. And I looked, it's not really going up against anything in November. Call of Duty comes out like November 4th. Right, that's totally different. And then nothing niche. really happens... Well, even so, if you only have so much money, it's not on games. I mean, that's true. That's buy true. Call of Duty, who everybody always buys. Right, except for me, I'm not doing it. Not doing it! That's okay. There was a... A guy that worked that said he wanted to buy the new Call of Duty only for Infinite Warfare. And I'm like... Or for uh, Modern Warfare Remastered. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, most people will. And he said something that I never even thought of. He's like, yeah, I'm just going to return it after I get the download code. I'm like... Oh my gosh, what a great idea. <laughs> Why? Why did we think of that? We definitely complained a lot about that. That's such an easy solution. That is such a great solution. Still Dang not going to buy it, though. Dang it. Well, Final Fantasy XV I'm excited for. Have you watched any of the storyline I saw it, videos? I was like, meh, meh, meh. I did, it, The storyline seems to be less crazy and ridiculous as, as compared to oh, 13. No, I haven't watched any of it. The storyline. I you saw haven't? some of the gameplay. Oh, okay. Gameplay looks kind of. Gameplay looks kind of like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, it's it's Which looks like a like a new for Final Fantasy. It's like a new style. Um, it's similar. Well, it, it I feel like it's trending in the way that Thirteen went. Which is more live action. I never played it. Like it's just not live action. That's the wrong word. But more like Kingdom Hearts, where it's more button mashing and you're more active during battles. Oh yeah. Classic Final Fantasy is turn based, yes. as you know. Um, but no, the storyline just like it really made me excited for it. Like it, it seemed to re return to some some more simpler roots. I think with Final Fantasy XIII, the storyline to me was a little bit too much. It was too uh, weird. I, I didn't feel like I knew who the bad guy really was most of the time. I didn't, didn't really know the place that my characters were. I didn't feel like I was in this epic struggle. Uh, by the end of it you start to feel that way, but for the majority of the game, I was like, what the cuss am I doing right now? I don't what even know cuss? what's going on. But 15 looks to be classic two kingdoms warring. Ooh, One simple. is focused on magic, the other is focused on technology. Um, is there really a difference? Well, I mean, the way Magica, it looks, yes. They call it Magicka? Magic, no. <laughs> the Magicka, the big suits of armor, is that you're talking about? I don't know. The Magitech oh, armor? Mana? What do they call it in Final Fantasy world? Just magic? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that was magic or you, something like that. Dude, you, you guys gotta understand, Tony, he's all Dragon Quest all day. That's right. So, he's a little bit... The only Final... Okay, I've played two Final Fantasy games. We talked about this before, I'm gonna bring it up again. Okay, might as well. Do you remember the first Final Fantasy game I ever played? Ten. Two. Final Fantasy... Ten two? Ten two. I am sorry, sir. Yeah. <laughs> that is the worst Final Fantasy game in existence. You have the same reaction every time I tell you. Yeah, it's such a bad game. Somehow That's you forget. I hate it. Final Fantasy X-2 was my first one I played, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? Yeah, worst and game. And then I picked up Final Fantasy XII, which I really enjoyed because of the Spice Pirate. Yeah. Balthier. Balthier is I'm the best like, character in that awesome. game, for sure. And they're remaking it, so I might pick it up again. But Talk in you. the disc case Done. for... Done. Done. No, that's backwards. In the disc case for Dragon Quest VIII, which I picked up, yeah. there was a demo for Final Fantasy XII. Oh. And that's why I picked it up, because I played the demo first. And you thought it was good. I thought it was alright. I'm like, yeah, this is kind of fun. Yeah, I, I The really... battle system in Final Fantasy XII mm -hmm. is not bad. Well, like the turn-based circles, the thing? Uh, it no, because like you, you can walk around and do whatever you want. It's more mm -hmm. like a cooldown. Mm -hmm. So it's less turn-based and more just you have to wait for a cooldown, which yeah. I, sounds like they did in thirteen. Yeah, well, thirteen was more like they actively fought and you chose the style in which they fought and you did they called them paradigm shifts and you could shift this strategy or style that they're fighting like almost immediately and it would have it sounds difficult yeah there, it was really weird to get used to but it was but by the end of it like it was pretty intuitive like there were some really cool things you could do with the with the combat system it was totally different though than any other final fantasy game that i would ever played 
So, 15 has been in development, or at least announced. For a very long time. 10 years ago. Very like, long time. Literally 10 years ago. What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, that's well, getting into the same, that's longer than The Last Guardian has been in development. In that, that is true. I think, I hope, what, here, I'll start with the positives. I hope, because I've had so much time, it's going to be awesome. I feel like in the past, uh, I think with 13, I was really disappointed with what they did. And I played Final Fantasy 14, being an online game, for a little bit. And I played yeah. Final Fantasy 11 a little bit. I mean, I've played every Final Fantasy pretty much. And nerd! I, yeah, nerd alert! How much time did you waste? Hundreds of hours. That's the if number. you had fun, it's, it's not wasting time. That's right. Gaming life. What's up? Also, uh, you're, you're communicating with it. Yeah. About it, not with it. True. Uh, I really feel like in recent times... To me, I haven't been able to connect with the story as much as I used to. Uh, I feel like Final Fantasy 7, 8, 9 on PlayStation 1... 6 is your favorite. 9 is my favorite. Shut up. 6 is your favorite. 6 is not my favorite. Uh, the PlayStation 1 Final Fantasy games were my favorite. Yes. And I felt like since then I've been slightly disappointed with every game that's come out. 10 was good. Final Fantasy game. Every Final Fantasy game. Yeah, for sure. Uh, there are other games I enjoy, like The Last of Us is awesome. However, totally different game. Uh, Tangent, also. You always talk about The Last of Us. Dude, it's so freaking good. You should pick another game that you enjoy. (laughs) Um, Uncharted. Battlefront. That's a totally different genre. That's fine. I do like Uncharted. I haven't played 4, though. And I know that makes you very upset. He's making sad faces right now. Either way. Puppy dog. I feel like the most recent installments of Final Fantasy have been a little bit disappointing to me. As in 13, really. I'm really just referencing 13. So I'm hoping the 15 is good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. We'll see what happens. They better not screw it up. After 10 years. I want to talk about Suicide Squad box office numbers. Okay, talk to me. I don't have... Wait, can I guess what happened? Sure. It's not doing well in box office after the, after the first week. Okay. They made like $43 million, and that's it. Something like that. No. Was it close? No. Was it forty three million dollars last week? Maybe uh, I, don't I don't know. Talk to me. Suicide Squad box office. It drops by. You can't. Don't look at my notes. Okay. Dang there's, it! There's a surprise in here. Dang it! Uh, it drops by seventy nine point four percent from first Friday to second Friday. Mm-hmm. So that's sixty four point eight million dollars the first Friday was out to thirteen point three five million dollars the second Friday is out. So that's quite a big yeah divot. Yeah. NPR um, this morning said it was because. Reviews are really bad. That's what they're... Guess reviews was. are bad before it came out, though. Yeah. Um, but the people who don't they, care about reviews... People tried to sue Rotten Tomatoes because they gave it a bad review. Seriously? And they're like, Rotten Tomatoes is aggregate. It's are just you, an average review. Are you kidding me? No. That's the most... That's one of the dumbest things I've ever heard. There was another thing that I think would hold up more in court mm-hmm. is that there's somebody in the UK that is trying to sue Warner Brothers because there wasn't enough Joker in the film. And the reason I think that holds up more is because... Every single poster and every single trailer shows the Joker. Mm-hmm. Almost at the center of the poster. So if you go in thinking, I want to see more Joker, and you only see like 15 minutes of him, you're mm-hmm. like, what is happening? Still, though, it's like a work of art. I don't, I don't think... Jared Leto also said, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what he said. Okay. Uh, he almost said, I hope I die tomorrow, so that way that Warner Brothers releases all the extra footage of the Joker, because otherwise I don't think it will see the light of day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he was so upset. They, they cut out some I of I knew it. they cut out a bunch of his stuff. He, I mean, he... People keep saying he dedicated like six months of his life to this role, and they only put him in for 15 minutes. So ridiculous. And like, uh, that sucks. Anyway. I don't uh, even think he did that great. So. so Suicide Squad dropped 79.4%. Yep. Batman v Superman dropped 81%. So that's almost on par with Batman v Superman. Pretty cl- Almost as bad as. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, Suicide Squad makes $192 million domestically. And 191.5 million overseas. Mm-hmm. The budget was 175 million, so they're more than they doubled. doubled it. Yeah, so, which is pretty good. Yeah, that's good. Um, Sausage Party takes the number one spot. The Seth Rogen <laughs> animated film, <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. Uh, yeah. With 13.5 million, the Friday, the second Friday. Nice. So that barely beats out. Yeah. Suicide Squad, but they also said that that's doing better than they expected it to do. Hmm. I still don't want to see it. I still don't. don't I'm not it. gonna see it. Um, you want to know what other movies have dropped by 75% or higher the second week? Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, I'm talking about, like, comic book movies that oh. are big. Uh, Hulk. The Incredible Hulk. That's one? Um... Just, just Hulk, not The Incredible Hulk. 
Okay. I knew one of the first Hulk movies. I believe Hulk is... The only Marvel one? No. Uh, I don't know. It's either the Edward Orange Jr. one or the other one. I don't know which one. I think the first one was really bad. I think they both were really bad. I don't know. Uh, so would Superman be on the list? Uh, Man of Steel. There highly is. regarded as the best DC Cinematic Universe movie. Mm. Also dropped by 75% or higher. Green Lantern. Um, okay. Fantastic Four. Yep. Watchmen. Okay. And I was surprised to see this on the list, but I was happy to. The Dark Knight Rises. Seriously? I don't like that movie. You didn't like that movie? No, it's not, not even good. a little bit? And then also, it obviously didn't do very well either. I was born in the darkness. Yeah, you can't understand what he's saying. I know. Also, a little underwhelming of a voice. I thought him being that big, he would have like a really deep. You also evil think voice. that he would just be use the actual Bane like Muscles sewage thing. system in his veins yeah, to yeah. make him huge? Didn't didn't do it. Um, Suicide Squad. This is the one you can't look at. Okay, not looking. Suicide Squad breaks a record uh, for opening day in August. Do you know who it took the record from? For August? Yes. Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. No way. Yes. Are you kidding me? Suicide Squad did better opening day in August than Guardians of the Galaxy did. I would also like to point out I didn't look and I knew that. Cool. That should be impressive. Um, you should be happy for Guardians me. of the Galaxy also dropped from first Friday to second Friday yeah. by 67.5%. The reason it's not more is because I went and saw it three times in two weeks. Which isn't that bad. 67.5% <laughs> is not that bad. However, Suicide Squad, how does that make you feel? Guardians of the Galaxy... Is way better. Your than favorite Su Marvel movie? It is way better than Suicide Squad. Yeah, by a thousand times, Ooh, at least. A thousand times. Okay, maybe a hundred times. Okay, that's more reasonable. more reasonable. Um, so, what do you think? Does that make you upset? It does make me does a little it almost upset. personally offend you. It does actually personally offend me. DC, looking at you. Stop making money. What, oh, what, I, what I give it last week? Was it 5 out of 10 or 6 out of 10? We didn't give it a number. We did the underpaid gamers. Oh, I did a buck 50. System, oh, yeah, I did a buck, buck 50. A buck yeah. 50 Blu-ray red box. Yeah. I gave it a $10 at the movie theater. Yep. I stand by that. I mean, I paid 10 bucks. I think it's pretty good. I don't regret going to see it in the movies. I don't because we hung out and then we podcasted about it. Yeah, and that, that makes it way more worth it. But by itself, I don't know if it'd be worth it. So it did similar to Batman v Superman. <sighs> you got me all flustered now. Oh, there's another thing I want to talk about. What? Um, I We were talking about this when we were playing Overwatch. We're going to add it to our predictions page. Uh-oh. Um, Which I will make a separate page, by the way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this first happened with uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Okay. There was DVD exclusivity at Target. only if you bought it at Target. Yeah, which like, was that's, dumb. That's a stupid idea. I don't want to see it anymore. However, when Batman v Superman came out, they didn't have this in theaters. They added all these extra scenes, a director's cut, exclusive, the, extended edition. Yeah, made it rated R. Made it rated R, I guess, and made it longer. And people are saying that that makes it a better movie. Mm -hmm. I don't like to see that either. But if it's one time, okay, that's fine. But now, you can expect to see that in Suicide Squad where they add all the scenes of Joker, Joker and add all this yeah. other thing, make it a three-hour movie, and it'll probably make it a better film. And then you'll see... I just don't, I don't want to see that. I, if you're going to put a movie, like, mm -hmm. DC has been doing this a lot. They make a three-hour movie, they cut it down to two hours and throw it in the theaters. Then it makes a whole bunch of money. Like, that's not a good film. Like, there might yeah. be uh, scenes and deleted scenes on Marvel films, but all, mm -hmm. every single film you see in theaters is, like, coherent. Yeah, I mean, mostly. Uh, I, how does this compare to just, like, director's cuts of movies? Because for a long time we've had director's cut versus theatrical cut. Like, even since the 90s. Yeah, but even without, even with a theatrical cut, you still understand what's happening. I don't think... So, a theatrical cut, if it's ranked at, like... If someone reviews it and gives it a 7 out of 10, mm -hmm. I don't think a director's cut should raise it to, like, a 9. I think it should still be, like, a 7.3 out of 10. It should only add so much. Yeah. But with, like... At least in the past it has, but with Batman v Superman, people are, like, raising it by, like, 3 points, and Suicide Squad, people are raising it by, like, 3 points. I'm like... Well, and just release really that like way that. in the first place. Yeah. If it's that good. Really some like people that. like three-hour-long movies. People watch Lord of the Rings. That was really popular yep. once. And all the extended cuts in Lord of the Rings didn't really add that much. I know. I don't actually like the extended I'll cuts rather in Lord just, of the Rings. I, mean, I have the collector's edition that comes with these little cases. I always watch that. It's four hours long. But know. if they took all the extended cut out and just watched the standard theatrical edition, that would be perfect. Yeah. I was. I movies, like the theatrical edition better. Movies though. should almost be better as a theatrical edition because that's when most people will see them. But I don't know. Direct, some people are just like really intense about that stuff. 
I'm not about it. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't want to see any more of it. Um, so that's Suicide Squad news. Mm-hmm. Um, Super Smash Con happened this last weekend. Boom, Smash tournament. Boom, boom. Uh, it was a melee tournament. Or was it was an all Smash tournament. Uh, this one, uh, Mango took first well, over Mango. Hunger Box, and then Mewtwo King got third, and then a whole bunch of other people. I just want to mention that real quick. That was fun. Mewtwo King was up there? Yeah. He was third. What about PPMD? Nope. He hasn't played in a long time. Dang it. He's still... He's, he's still, your fave. He's still in he retirement is. or No, he's sabbatical. not in retirement. He's still in sabbatical, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> call it that. Um, and then also today, there's just small little news. Uh, the Destiny Collection, I, I think it's just called The Collection, will be released on September 20th. And this includes all five DLCs, including the new Rise of Iron. Uh, so this could be $59.99, so $60.00. You get all the expansions, all the good stuff, and then you also get the pre-order bonuses. So keep that in mind if you want to play Destiny, and you haven't played in a long time. We we keep saying it's going to be a return to Destiny, and I thought we were going to do it together, but my abandonment of you in the summer led to things happening. Yep. Tony returned to Destiny without me. I don't regret it. It was fun. I almost played it today. I was playing Pokemon Uranium instead. I'm so ashamed of you. You should be. Do you feel dirty? I hope you feel dirty. No, I feel like I had fun. Dang it. I'll do it again. Not even remorseful. No. Let's move on. I mean, you I left. Can't, I can't take this you conversation. Okay. <laughs> uh, you want to talk about... Let's talk about the International, which is the Dota 2 tournament. Okay. So, the largest esports tournament ever. Ever! Dota 2's The International finished last weekend uh, with a total prize pool of over $20 million. That's what's up. The first place, t- uh, the first place team took home $9 million to split between themselves making this the most ever winnings of any eSport team. Not only that, the second team took home $3.4 million, making that the second most winnings of any eSport. Uh, the finals of the tournament took place in Seattle's own Key Arena, capable of holding up to or upwards of 17,000 people. Mm. Grand finals were between Wings Gaming and Digital Chaos. Taking home the first place, the first place prize was Wings Gaming, winning over Digital Chaos 3-1 to one in a best of five games. Huh. So we talked about this. The this week. Lo- I texted you. Yeah. I said, "Hey, this is going on." I watched some of it. I don't. Know, I've never played Dota two in my life, but I'm like, it was really interesting. The largest amount of winnings you could ever have happened for the first place, and then the second most largest of ever mm. happened at second place. That's so you, you get second place at this tournament and do better than any other tournament in the history. So when you texted me this, I thought nine million dollars. That's quite a bit. Quite a bit of money. Yep. And at the time, me and uh, my friend were talking about our business plan to start a brewery, which will probably not happen. But we like to joke like we do, like yep. if it's going to happen. And we need a million and a half dollars oh. to start. And so I thought, quickest way to do that, Dota player, professional gaming. Mm, Gotta win. I don't know if I'd say quickest. Well, that's plan A. Plan, that's, that's plan A? We have a plan B. I can't remember what it was, though. It was funny. Was it writing a book? I can't remember. Writing a book would be quicker. Definitely, probably. Actually, no, I said I was going to get an Overwatch, because I like Overwatch Ooh, better than There me. is Overwatch competition. There was a $200,000 tournament. Recently. Did I take that? Yeah. I, mean, I take that in the heartbeat. It was right. also on <laughs> TBS, the league. Oh, yeah. How's that doing? That's doing good. I mean, they, last time we took added Overwatch. Overwatch. That's what's up. So that's what's up. So that's what's happening. That's what happened with the international. I figured we like talking about esports. We love esports. We support we 100%. We like MOBAs. We do. We, we play Spike. We're good at, or we, we enjoy Spike. MOBAs. I don't know how good we are at MOBAs. We're not good. We enjoy playing them, though. Most of the games we play at, we're not good at. Except for Destiny. We're really bad at games. The, yeah. <laughs> the reason I like Destiny is because it took me a really long time to get back into it, but yeah. as soon as I did, I was destroying people. Any game that I can just wipe the floor with people, I'm going to like. Call of Duty. Destruction. Mm-hmm. Destiny. Destruction. Um, we actually had a, a friend... Um, what's a lot of fun, uh, the Red Herring, if you see him in any videos or anything, he loves Destiny. It's probably his favorite game. That's fine. Definitely. Um, he says that that's the game he plays best at. He always has, like, a positive KD, he always does this and does this, and I'm like, and I play with him, like, yeah, he does. Mm -hmm. Um, he's like, I'm the best at Destiny, no one can beat me. Then my first two games, I did better than him, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, this is funny, I'm gonna mention it to him. No, no. (laughs) And he didn't take it bad. Um, and after that I got destroyed just because like I got I guess you could say I got overconfident you got too big for your britches I, I mean I just I started rushing when I shouldn't have rushed I should take my time because Destiny is a slower slower game like Call yep. of Duty um, but it was just fun to point that out to him yep anyway <laughs> so that's what happened when I played Destiny 
Uh, speaking of shooters and who's better at what, I was in the middle of a lecture today about econ, of course. Because you're a teacher. Because I'm a teacher, as our avid listeners know. And, uh, Not you newbies. A student in, in the middle of a little uh, break was like, hey, you play Battlefront? And I was like, yeah. He's like, what's your KD, bro? Uh, and I was like, let me show you. I was like, what do you think it is? Did you, did you get it on the computer or something? Uh, it's on the app. Huh? You and, have a Battlefront app? Yeah. What I had is re- that I had to re-download it. There's actually a game on it. You can play it. It has like a mini game in it. <sighs> um, but I showed it to him. He was impressed. What two, is it? 2.33. Really? That's what's up? Dude, I'm telling you, Battlefront's my game. Battlefront must be easy. Hey, if you, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what did he say? 1.5 or something like that. Which is a respectable KD. That's... That happens a lot. Okay, we're better than the average gamer. You think so? I think so. I thought we just said we're really bad at games. But against the average gamer, I think we're better. So, like, there was a guy at work that challenged me to Smash. Mm-hmm. And I, never, I don't like to brag about how good I am at Smash. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's a good way to get your words shoved right back in your face. Yep. You say, I'm so good at this game. Yep. And then they beat you they and like, destroy oh. you. So instead, I let him do all the talking, and then I destroyed him. Literally, ten games we played, and he didn't win a single one, right? <laughs> so that also happens in Call of Duty, where people, like, so I had a roommate, so I played Call of Duty in college, and I had a roommate, and my roommate would always be like, yeah, Tony's so good at Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. And he had a guy, he had a friend come over, he's like, yo, Tony's so good at Call of Duty. And the friend's like, ha what's your KD, bro? And I'm like, I don't want to talk about it, like. Just leave me alone. Dude, let's He's like, yeah. no, let's, let, let me see your KD. And I pull it up, it was like a 2.5. Yeah. He's like, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? He's like, I bet, I bet I'm better than you that I showed him the KD. And he's like, never mind. It's yeah. just, that's, I hate people when they're arrogant yeah. about things like that. Because, again, that's just the best way to get words shoved back down your throat. Because mm-hmm. I'm so good at this game, you can never beat me. And then you get beat. And then you're embarrassed. I don't want to be embarrassed. Yeah. So I just, I always sell myself short when things come up like this. Well, you know, I think, I think with gaming and with life, a lot of times, competition is fun. Yeah. But, it, to me, it's only fun when it's in, when you're winning, when, when it's in good sport. Oh. Like, when you're being a good sport about things. You it's know, fun when I win. And when you're playing with friends. I'm more about it for the community and for the fun of the stories yeah. and things. <laughs> Except for the whole plan A to... Raise a million and a half dollars. I love... I'll let my thumbs do the talking. That was scary. A power display card? Uh... Okay. Anyways. Cool. Awesome. Um, so one more set of news. Uh, Black Panther, the movie. I'm I found excited out, I found for... Out a lot of stuff. Tell me. Um, the release date has been moved to February 16th of 2018, with filming starting in January of 2017. Directed by Ryan Coogler, who was the same director... Behind Oscar-nominated film Creed in 2015. There it is. Uh, Black Panther's story will take place after the events of Civil War, where T'Challa has inherited the throne and Bucky is in a stasis chamber. Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios, says that the film has had had to be moved up because there are events that tie into Avengers film that will, that will be released in April of 2018. Hmm. Uh, the story is rumored to be about two villains challenging Black Panther's rule of, of Wakanda. Uh, the first villain will we can expect to see is Eric Killmonger. Uh, he's essentially a beat-for-beat match to, Ch- to Black Panther, T'Challa. Okay. Um, having pursued the kingdom of Wakanda before, Killmon- Killmonger will have to team up with another villain villain to take down the Black Panther. Uh, this other villain could be Claw, who we, saw in the f- uh, who we first saw in Avengers Age of Ultron. So Claw was a guy um, who got his hand cut off by Ultron. Um, this is right before Scarlet Witch... Changed our minds, changed everybody's minds, and showed them all the fears right before Iron Man and Veronica fought Hulk. So they're down there, I believe it's Africa. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're in the ship? Yeah, they're in that shipyard. Oh, yeah. And oh, yeah, I know he's who there is. and he gets his hand cut he's, off. He's the arms dealer guy. Yeah. Okay. And he gets his arm cut off. So he's originally a Black Panther villain? Character. 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 Yeah. Um, and then obviously, Wakanda is the home of the Vibranium. Which has, which is what Captain America's shield of. I don't expect to see him, uh, but that's why Bucky's there, so they can make him a new arm. Um, and while he's in like a stasis chamber, I definitely expect to see Bucky in this film. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Eric Killmonger, I looked him up, and he's like, exactly just like Black Panther, just evil. So people are talking about how Black Panther, his DNA 
is always in question because he inherited the throne from his father, mm-hmm. his the kingdom. So he's a king of Wakanda. But people are always like, I don't know about your DNA, dude. So Killmonger would probably be like, I have the right DNA, make me king. Saying that he's the actual heir? Yeah. He, okay, so it's talking about who's who's the real son. Yeah. Okay. But then, uh, so kind of a Games of Thrones thing. <laughs> um, but then again, Black Panther didn't have a uh, an origin story in Civil War. So I doubt we'll see that. And we might just go straight into it. Mm-hmm. So he might already have history with these two villains. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, okay I'm excited to see this without any major Marvel characters. Yep. As in, like, the, the the ones that have already been built up. And it's clearly a very different setting. Yeah. It's in Africa. The I'm excited. Africa, as opposed to New York. And we've talked about this before, that Marvel does a really good job of making its films feel different. Yes. Uh, in terms of their style and what, what they're really about. So hopefully this will be, like, a fun drama or political theory, thriller or something. I don't know. It'll just be, be fun. It'll be interesting to see what, what type of curveball they throw us. And Black Panther's really fun to watch on screen. Like, he destroyed He people. He did a really good... He was the character going into Avengers, and I was like, well, he seems like a weird character Civil to War. throw in the Avengers. That's what I meant. Civil, Civil War. War. I was like, this character seems to be one that I'm not really that excited about. Yeah. And then when we watched it, You're he, like, be, he yeah. very quickly became one of the ones I liked the most. Because he the, fights so well. Yeah. And he's just like, his character, though we didn't get a lot of it, he was really cool. He seems like a good guy. There was a good amount. There was a... I made a video recently mm-hmm. of my... Top five anticipated Marvel games, and a Black Panther game was on there. If you want to go watch that, you can. Dude, I did YouTube. watch it, actually. Did you? Yeah. What do you think? I said, make it similar to a Assassin's Creed 3 type feel. Yeah, I can see that. So, in Assassin's Creed 3, it's kind of the first time where they had, like, a wilderness that you could run around in. Mm-hmm. And Wakanda, I put up the map, is very, like... So, Wakanda is the most uh, technologically, technologically advanced yeah. city, country, on the planet. So, mm-hmm. you're obviously going to have a giant city filled with all this other stuff but on the outside it's still in africa so you still have deserts and forests and all these other places i'm mm-hmm. like if you added the frontiering of assassin's creed to like but put black panther in it have him run through the trees too. and stuff yeah. like that'd be so cool that would be very cool and then even the combat could be similar because assassin's creed you take on like six guys at a time mm-hmm. and black panther could easily do oh, that duh he's awesome so that'd just be a lot of fun yeah also there's a lot of good ideas in that video and you should watch it yeah if you've not watched it check out our youtube channel Underbreak Gamers. I was really disappointed because I only got like one of those. Hey, one of those was me. Good job. Thanks. Proud of you. It's also pinned on our Twitter. So just go to our Twitter and you can watch it there. And I think I posted it on our Patreon too. Wait, it's in our feed. So if you Google it, it's there. Um, I believe that's... Yep, that's all the news I have. Unless you want to talk more about Black Panther. Any more thoughts? Nope. Still excited? Yes. Wait. I wonder what could happen in Black Panther that would then have an effect on... Avengers. Well, I think Bucky getting his arm back. Either that or there's an Infinity Stone there. That would be awesome. We haven't seen one of those for a while. Yeah. And we're still missing one, I believe. Yeah. So it'll be fun. That would be very cool. But I feel like that's what Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is going to be. Another, for them, another one? Dude, they already had one. They have like the rest of the universe. Earth, how many is that going to have? How many is like they going to have? That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> how many is they going to have? <laughs> That was not good grammar. That's okay. Well. I'm excited. That was fun. That was good. Uh, I forgot to add this. Um, I can't remember his name. The guy that played in Krieg, in Creed, and also he played in Fantastic Four, Jordan something. Mm-hmm. Hold on. What's happening over here? Oh, there's a tornado warning. Interesting. Well, let's not get dead from a tornado. Sorry, my phone was blown up. I, I heard it. I don't think they heard it, though. But now they know about it. I was distracted. Okay. Well, either way. No Man's Sky? Sure. No, I, I was in the middle of a thought. Oh, what's your thought? Anyways, he's in this movie. He played uh, the Human Torch in Fanta- and Fan Stick. Mm. And then he played... Uh, he played the, the fighter in Creed. I can't think of the actor's name. But mm-hmm. he's going to be in Black Panther as well. That's cool. Just thinking about that. Just thinking about that. Anyway. No Man's Sky? No Man's Sky. Tell me what you think, because... I have not played it. Yeah. Well, can I... Should I do pro? I'll do pros first, and I'll do cons. Uh, sure, if you want to break it up like that. Well, I just like to organize the way I think. Or else it's just a big old word vomit. Ooh, my favorite. So, pros. No Man's Sky. Um, it has... Really, like, when you're in a system, no load screens. So you can go from a space station to the ground seamlessly. That's cool. Which is very cool. 
So the, the sense of scale in the game is awesome. How long does it take to load screen? So you start the game up. Okay, so PS4 has a rest mode, and when you go into rest mode and you have the game up, mm -hmm. you pick it back up as soon as you turn the PS4 back on. Yeah. Does it have to load from there, or is it all ready loaded? Uh, I think it's... Or have you not done that because you forget that no. you can put your PS4 in rest mode? No, I do put it in rest mode now, pretty regularly. Uh, I think it has to load. Okay. If I remember right. I've only played it three or four times. So Bloodborne had like a 15 minute load screen. Yeah, until they updated it. Does this one have a really long load screen at the start? Uh, I, would, I wouldn't say it's it's not longer than Bloodborne. So I think it's shorter than Bloodborne, honestly. Yeah. The way they do it, from what I understand, is when you jump hyperspace jump into a system, the hyperspace jump is the load screen for the entire system. Okay. And then that whole system is seamless. Like, there's no loading screen. And that's pretty amazing because the planets are huge. Holy cow. Have you found a small planet yet? No. Because I don't want to small, find a small I've planet. I've only found huge planets. See, that would annoy me. Like, But I did find a, a planet that w had literal towers of gold. And I felt so rich. And I just went down, mined a bunch of it, brought it back up to the space station, sold it. Did it like three times. And now Ooh. I'm rich. Nice. I was so happy too because I was like so upset that I didn't have any money. I was like, I want to buy these cool ships I keep seeing, but I can't because I have no money. And then guess what? Jump two systems, found the Tower of Gold, which I named the planet Tower of Gold. That's so cool. Nice. Gold inspires. I can't remember what I named Not it. Too bad. Either way, uh, so seamless and scale, really cool. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that are super positive, but I'm starting to slow down oh. on it. <laughs> That's so, not good. Yeah. So I love the idea of the game. Okay. I love the idea of exploration. The things that I struggle with with No Man's Sky is exactly what you said before. Okay, we gotta we gotta take a second. Okay. Um, you were talking about your towers of gold. Yeah. I yeah. really want to make a golden shower reference, and I refrained. I want you and I want the audience to know that I could have made a golden shower reference and mm -hmm. a golden shower joke. I did not. I don't even know what that means, but proceed. Okay. Either way. Uh, <laughs> I love the idea of okay. No Man's Sky. I love exploration. You love that it's like infinite. Yes. Essentially. I mean, well, it's... not necessarily infinite, but not that not that it's infinite, but the fact that you explore. Yeah. However, this game hmm? is more of a survival game. Huh. Because I'm constantly having to like, like manage my inventory. My inventory, your inventory is very small and it's really annoying. And you have to keep all these elements to keep your life support system going, your temperature, whatever, going, mm -hmm. your mining crystal recharged, uh, your weapon recharged, your ship thrusters recharged, and a lot of these things use different elements. Can you get stuck on a planet? Uh, every planet has, I think, some basic minerals that will allow you to get off the planet. Oh, okay. Um, they don't all have every one, though. Not all, I think they always have, like, plutonium and there's a couple of them. Either way... Because I have to maintain all these things, it really limits what I can actually carry in my inventory. Now, I know later in the game, from what I've read, and if I buy a new ship, you can get way more inventory space. But it is so limiting. I've played it for probably 12 hours, mm -hmm. and it's just been very limiting. It's annoying. I'm constantly having to micromanage like my inventory. And it's more like, you got to survive. And that's Do you think really that's intentional, or do you think they'll patch that so you can have more? I don't know. I feel like it might be intentional because I read the back of the game because I was wondering about it and it said, talked about survival being... Mm -hmm. So I don't know if But that's... there's also creatures and yeah. robot flying things that try to kill you. So maybe... Dude, and the, the atmosphere itself. Yeah. So that's surviving enough. You don't need to... Well, it's just... Your life support doesn't char like doesn't last very long and it's really annoying. And... Would you... Could this game be compared to Minecraft? Uh, I would say in some ways. I feel like the crafting is is supposed to be a major part of the game, but it's also very limited. There's only like six things you can craft, at least at this point, like basic minerals, and then you use those things to build items. Is, this, so, is this a game that if you get to the center of the universe, which is the end game, apparently, yeah. and I, you haven't been there yet, so maybe you don't know, no. um, is it a game that you would still play after that, or you just be like, meh? You know, I think... The game itself has, like, the type of thing, it's not one of those things, games that I want to play all the time. Mm -hmm. However, I don't, I think it's the type of game that every now and then popping it in for a couple hours, it doesn't punish you for not playing. Yeah. And it is, like, it is enjoyable. Like, it's fun to discover a new planet, and it's fun to, like, check out the 
you know, the animals and the what, what the topography looks like. It, that's really interesting. And the game is, like, it's pretty. It's a pretty game. I mean, I don't think the graphics are as high, as good as they thought I thought they were going to be. Oh, yeah? I thought the visuals were going to be a lot better than they are, based off of the screenshots that I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not as pretty as what I thought. But uh, it still is really cool to see the different topography. And I have enjoyed... Uh, you learn languages in the game too as you go through. And it's been kind of interesting to learn the language. I saw that that looked that looked interesting, but at the same time, it's like you it's kind learn of one too. word at a time. It's like whoa. it takes forever. Um, is this a kind of game that like you sit down to play and you're like, oh, I'll just play for half an hour, and then it's like two hours later and you're like, oh, I'm still playing. Like this is crazy. How did that happen? Yeah, but there's a you eventually like that's happened to me every time. I've always played. Like, popped it in, and, like, oh, I'll play it for an hour, and end up playing a long time. But, a bit, like, after, like, three or four hours, I hit a wall. And I'm like, what's the point? Like, what am I doing? Like, another planet? Like, I don't okay. feel like I've made any progress. See, I feel like that's where... Oh, that too. But I feel like that's where, like, small, different sized planets come in. So, like, you're like, mm-hmm. oh, I'll just finish this planet real quick. Oh, it's really small. I'll do another one. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, you have to decide how... What type of explorer you want to be. Do you want to explore one planet for, like, six hours? Because mm-hmm. you probably could... Actually, definitely could. Or do you want? To, I just usually land on a planet. I find one beacon. I try and find the language stones, and then I look for rare minerals, sell them, and then move on to the next planet. That, and that's pretty much what I do. I make contact with the alien life form on the planet mm-hmm. if there are intelligent ones, and then go from there. Have you been in any space battles yet? I've been in uh, three space battles. Are those fun? I died two times. Two of the three battles I lost. Oh, so if you die, you lose? If you die, it is like uh, Dark Souls, where you lose all your stuff. Okay. It, it, there's like a grave. But you can go back to it. You can go back to I saw it. That. Um, so that's nice that you can go back. Uh, space battles are, at this point, not much fun, because my ship isn't very good, and you know, I lose every single time. The Towers of Gold. Yeah, I need. I haven't bought one yet. I have enough money to buy one now. Oh. I just haven't found one I like. So, I want you to give it the normal underpaid gamers rating, and then we'll talk more about it after that. Yeah. But how much would you pay for this game? Uh, I think this is a forty-five dollar game. Ratchet and Clank you played mm-hmm. was a forty dollar game. Yeah, I would have paid more for Ratchet and Clank. That was so good. That was such a good game. Yeah, I would pay sixty bucks for that game. Um, Dude, I put so many freaking hours on that game. Fresh and clean. I played, I played it twice. through. I got all the. Trophies. I played through twice too. It's I, so much fun. I almost got all the trophies. It's so much fun. Um, so forty five dollars for this game. Yeah. So fifteen dollar discount from where normally you yeah. expect it to be. Interesting. And that's really because, to me, my expectations of the game was that it was going to be more exploration. And I feel like if it's a spectrum of exploration and survival, it's like more on the survival side mm-hmm. than I thought it was going to be. I okay. thought it was going to be more exploration. Um, and I felt like there was going to be more progress to it. I don't necessarily like... Like, I like the fact that I I find things and it's my own and no one else has found it before. But at the same time, there is... Like, you're in the same universe as all these people, but you're never going to run into somebody. There's nothing to show There's, like, no multiplayer. As an outsider looking in... Mm-hmm. I try to keep tabs on it to see what happened. Yeah. On the very first day it came out, uh, two players actually ended up on the same planet, but they couldn't see each other. Um, so Sean Murray, the creator behind it, mm-hmm. tweets out about this. Um, and essentially he said that they sold more copies than they expected to sell. Well, and at the same time, I'm like, how is it possible you have production demands? You should yeah. know exactly how many you produce. And you have 18 quintillion planets to put these people on. Yeah, but he goes on to say... Uh, so this is about two people meeting and not being able to see each other. He says in tweet in tweet form, uh, it's a testament to how amazing our network coders are that discoveries are still working at all. I don't know what a discovery is. An in game thing? Well, yeah. Well, when you land on a planet, you discover it. Okay. And you get a it has your name registered on it. Oh, so he's like, that's it's crazy how that even happens. And he says, uh, we hope to see those happening, but too many are too many of you are playing right now more than we could have pr- predicted. I'm like, are you how, kidding me? How do you not predict that? Again, you know how many games you produced. And you think about all the pre-orders. Yeah. Like, you can you can guess how many you're going to get based off pre-orders, and then how many people generally buy the game the first... Like, yeah. You, you, can, you clearly have these predictions. That's how yeah. sales works. Yeah. That's how, product, that's how marketing works. Uh, he says, we want, to, we want people to be aware that they are in a shared universe. We added online features and some Easter eggs to create cool moments. 
Uh, we added a scan for play scan for other players in the galactic map to try to encourage this happening. We wanted it to happen, but on the first day? Question mark. Yeah, <laughs> it's a video game. It's supposed to be done when it comes out. Jeez. See, and there there's a big debate about that going on right now. I can see both sides of the story, yeah. but I just there's a there have been a lot of tales of No Man's Sky. There's a very large patch on day one. Mm -hmm. Oh, there was. Yeah, there was, right? yeah. Um, and they said there's a lot of patch notes for it. I don't have them pulled up, mm -hmm. but on another podcast I listened to, which was PS, PS, I love you, XOXO. We're citing our sources. Which is actually really good. Um, they said that they went through the list of all the things that patched, mm -hmm. and it almost did like a 180 on the game. Completely changed it from what it used to be. Mm -hmm. So the guy that, that paid over $1,000 for it before it came out, Played a totally different game. Yeah, played a totally different game from what this was. Yeah. And that's another reason why the, the reviews for this game didn't come out until like a day before it was released. Because PlayStation's like, there's an update that's coming that's going to completely change everything. We can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. Like, what, you'll, what you will be playing is different from what that game will actually be. Yeah. Type of thing. Um, but when he says, like, uh, scan for other players on first day, part of me is like, yeah, add that. Because people obviously want that. Because... Yeah. While this was never marketed as a multiplayer, as a multiplayer game, game. Right. people thought it was a multiplayer game. Well, people assumed that when you, like, from what I was told from the beginning, you discover planets and it marks your name on it. Yeah. What's the point of marking your name on it if nobody ever sees that it? nobody else can see it. If I'm the only person who sees it, it doesn't matter. And they said it was all going to be in the same universe, so it would have been really cool to say, oh, I'm going to go see this planet that my brother told me about, and yeah. he claimed it, and mm -hmm. I'm going to go do it. But apparently, they don't care. So that's what happened. So he said... So he said on the first day, and I understand they're a small company, but and I know where he's going with this. There's going to be patches and going to be updates and things like sure. that. But at the same time, it's like... I guess I'm not being very understanding. Because but you've they, they played, do have like a 14-person team, right? 12. It's but like you, so small. You've played the game and you feel burnt because you paid for it. A little like, bit. Expecting like, things. I, I, expectations yeah. ran rampant with this game. Yeah, and that's why I said it was the most anticipated game because I feel like it had so many questions about it and it was so... Like, like there wasn't ever like what other exploration game is there like this? Like there's nothing that Rogue I Rogue Galaxy, of. dude. Rogue Galaxy is so good. Almost. PlayStation we'll Two. We can uh, talk. yeah, but no, that's Rogue Galaxy. No Man's Sky. Rogue Galaxy. Rebel Galaxy. Rebel Galaxy. That's what I meant. Rogue Galaxy. I thought it was Rogue Galaxy. That's the PS2 game. I meant to say Rebel Galaxy. Oh, I don't. Which oh. is the game that you're playing? I am playing that right now. That does not have 18 quintillion planets. Right. You also can't go on the planets. So the True. cool thing about this is you can go on the planets. <laughs> yeah. But you said something that. Again, I thought of what, just thinking, because mm -hmm. it's one of those things, I don't play the game, I'm thinking from the outside in. Yeah. Um, and essentially what you said is, you can't share this with anybody. So, so Skyrim, any any other RPG, you can say, hey Justin, I found this awesome planet, there's this awesome thing here, mm -hmm. go to this place. Mm -hmm. And you can't. Like, my universe is different from your universe. I can't say, unless there's like a GPS. Well, technically you could, but to find it would be so hard. Yeah. You would spend hours just looking for the right system. So, like, Skyrim, I'll be like, Justin, there is a Star Wars reference in one of these caves mm -hmm. where Luke Skywalker is hanging upside down, or a skeleton is hanging upside down from a cave. From ice or something, yeah. And then on the bottom, there's a flame of, uh, there's a sword of flame or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, lightsaber. Go exactly here, you'll find it. He's like, yeah. oh, okay, I can go there, I'll see you, and I'll love yeah. it. But here, I can't be like, I found this planet of golden towers, go to it. Yeah. And you're just like, well, That's why I named it there, because I, I was thought if somebody comes across this planet, they'd like, be like, oh, look, so much gold. Um, yeah, and that's, maybe it'd be cool if there was a feature where you could see everybody in your friends list who plays the game, and then see all their discoveries, mm -hmm. and keep, like, look into the planets they've discovered, look into the creatures they've discovered, like, that would be a cool feature. I mean, that could even be, like, an out-of-game feature, like, you know... Like an app or something? Yeah, you know, or like a web page or something where you could just get updated, see the feed of somebody else's yeah. discoveries. But, alas, so they're a 12-person team. And then... It was released on PC. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, was it released on PC. Have you heard about how bad it was on PC? No, I have not. Tell me about it. They are calling it Arkham Knight levels of bad. Oh my god. I don't remember if you remember how bad Arkham Knight was. I remember PC. how bad. They're it saying was. it's equivalent to that. That frame issues, all broken. those other things, just broken beyond belief. Mm -hmm. And at, I mean, this is always supposed to be a PS4 game. Mm -hmm. um, but don't release on, on if it's not ready. Right, well, they and could, th that's completely different from a scan for players. Yeah. Well, and they could do that... Dip, they could do it like they do other games. Release it on the exclusive console, wait six months to, to so port it to a PC, it. which probably isn't that hard, because it's a PC. Yeah. 
And do it that way. Politically correct. Yeah. Of course. In all things. That's right. Anyway. Um, so that's not necessarily all my thoughts. I want to know, do you have any other feelings about No Man's Sky? Are you enjoying it? Are you going to go back to it? I'm enjoying it. I'm not done with the game yet. Do you plan on getting to the center of the universe? Yeah, or I'm, I'm going to get there. Is there like a, like a milestone? Is there like a map? And it says, go this way to the center. Yeah. And you, which way do you go? Do you go uh, you I've go been following it? the center, the, the map to the center, because I figure once you get to the center, you can probably continue exploring. Yeah. So I'm so. just like working awful. my way there. Uh, my next goal, like essentially, because there aren't isn't a whole lot of direction in the game besides like, hey, you might want to follow this yellow, yellow line here. Yeah. Um, yellow brick road. Yeah. Since there isn't, I, I keep making like goals for myself. Like, I'm gonna buy a new ship. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna explore this solar system today. I'm gonna do this today, and that's made it better because then it puts like a goal that I can achieve. Yeah. And there are, like, milestones, too, that you get as you play the game. I I end up getting one, like, every 30 minutes. So is that too much? Too uh, frequent? Does it, no. feel like, does it feel like anything, or does it feel like... It, it's all right. At first, I really liked Do it. Do you have a level? No. Does your character have a level? No, but you're, you constantly get upgrades for things, okay. and you can build, like, uh, like for your weapon and things. You, get, you find tons of different types of... Uh, like mining tools and weapons because it's the same thing. It's, you just flip yeah. the switch, and uh, each one has different slots, and then you can build like gyms attachments to them, okay. and you find attachments all over the place, and like random things to make your weapons better, to make your suit better. So there's like lots of upgrades you can find. Would well, you do. feel like you did? You had more. Uh, do you feel like you would do more if, or do you feel like you had accomplished more if your character has a level? Like, oh, when I started, I was at level 5, but now I'm at level 7. Uh, I don't know if I need the level number. I think equipment is enough. Yeah. Because no, I'm, no. I'm, like, leveling up my equipment. Like, no increase in HP? What if yeah. you could build up an immunity to, like, a specific toxin in the atmosphere? Dude, that'd be sick. And then whenever you went to a planet with that, you'd be like, or like okay, I got you, gills. You have, like, thermal skin, so you don't have to wear your suit when you go to an ice planet. That'd mm -hmm. be cool. Have you found an ice planet? I found a, a sub-zero planet, but it wasn't ice. What'd you name it? I didn't name it anything. Did you even Hoth or anything? I let the I let the game name it. So how does that work? Like when you find a was planet, it kind of fun at first, and now you're just like, just do it. I don't care. Uh, well, I actually didn't name it until I found the planet with the gold spires, because that's when I figured out how to do it. Which is another complaint about this game. There is no real tutorial. Okay. There's like no story at all. It's like, hey, you crash out on this planet. You need to do these things. A. Fix your ship. B. Launch off the planet. So no direction. C. Go into a spaceport. And that was it. It mm -hmm. doesn't explain how to fire... I mean, there are a lot of things that are natural, right? Like, fire your weapon. Yeah. yeah. Blah, blah. But I didn't, I didn't know how to craft. I didn't know how... I didn't... I still don't understand how the whole Guardian thing works. It's very similar to Minecraft. Those, those robots who fly around and shoot you sometimes. Yeah. Like, there's a way to make them angry. Okay. And I, I'm sure it has to do with, like, mining too much or, attack, or like, attacking the animals. So when or... you see those, do you destroy all of them or do you No, I them? usually just ignore them. Ugh. There are some planets that they automatically attack you. When you first land on a planet, it gives you, like, some descriptions about it that you learn. And one of them is the level of protection it gets from the sentries or sentinels or okay. something. And uh, if, they're, like, if it's red, it means that they automatically attack you as soon as they see you. So that, those planets suck. Um... Because they, like, you start off and you're so weak, it's so hard to fight them off. Like, it's annoying. I haven't died to the Sentinels on the planets yet. It's just been pirates that have killed me. <gasps> Space pirates. I love pirates. Dude, it's so annoying. Man, I was, like, getting off the planet of gold mm -hmm. with a cargo full, like... With your booty. So much gold. Yeah. And anytime you have valuable stuff in your cargo, it's uh -oh. more likely that pirates will pull you out of warp. And so they pulled me out of warp and there were, like, three of them and I fight them off. Was it easy or hard? Did you lose that one? That was the one I won. Nice! Thank the Lord. It's worth it. I put so much... I took so long to mine yeah. all that gold. I seriously spent like 45 minutes mining. Gosh. It made me think of EVE Online. So, in my head, I keep comparing this game to Minecraft. I mean, there are so many similarities to Minecraft. Which would you say is more worth your dollar? Uh, That's a hard question. Probably... Which one is... And they're both equivalent. So, yeah. obviously, Minecraft's been out longer and has more things to it. Yeah. 
Well, Minecraft is for like a building game yeah. slash survival. This one's like exploration slash survival. And it feel like the thing that makes it feel like Minecraft is the mining because mm-hmm. you like get things from it. But the crafting is so different, and you don't actually like build anything in the real world. You just upgrade your equipment and upgrade your ship. Hmm. And that doesn't do a whole lot in terms of what it looks like. So really, you're just destroying the planet and then getting upgrades that don't really change. So what's the best part about this game? Uh, The best part of this game is the moment when you warp into a star system and you look around, you see all these planets, and you look at them and say, this one looks the best. I'm just going to warp right to it. And you warp to it. And you, or you just uh, fly real fast towards it, mm-hmm. and you land on it, and you jump off that ship for the first time. You discover it, and you look around, and you're like, "Man, this is cool. Look at that thing over there." What's your favorite kind of planet? What's that? Uh, so far, I think I like a jungle planet the most. Oh, I've I've really had a lot of volcanic planets, um, and like dark planets. Mm-hmm. I haven't had any like. What do you mean by dark planets? Like it's like the, the ground is like. Black or red. Okay. I've had a lot of like dark and and uh, fiery or hot colors or warm colors. I think that's what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't had any blue planets yet, or I've had Sub Zero. I've had Green Planet. Oh yeah. I haven't had any like tropical planets either, and I haven't seen like walking robots because that was in that was on the cover. Yeah. On the back of it, it's mm-hmm. like walking robot guys. I haven't seen that. Uh, I have been attacked by some pretty mean looking animals. That's fun. Cool. Because I have a shotgun. Uh, can I'm you, a sorry. Can you create a shotgun? I don't know. I bet there is one. I feel like a shotgun will be useful or something like that. Yeah. Anyway, so that's essentially that's No Man's Sky. That's no Man's Sky. Official your, your first... Dustin twelve hours in. Yeah. Review was forty five bucks. I don't know. We'll see if you play it longer. If you yeah, it might change. Kind of... It might change. Who knows? I don't know what the middle of the universe is supposed to look like. I also feel like there's. This whole aspect of the game I haven't even touched yet with all these ships. I see all these, like, freighters and giant capital ships everywhere mm-hmm. in space sometimes. They, like, warp in. I have no idea how to rea- interact with them. You, like, fly up to them? I fly, I've flown up to them. I, one looked like I had a hangar bay, and I flew towards the hangar bay, which is how you dock it to a station as you go towards the docking-looking yeah. part. And it, I just bounced off the ship. You didn't shoot it or anything, did you? No. I would not shoot one of those things. They have so many turrets on them. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have... The first time I died, I was trying to help protect those things because oh. a bunch of pirates warped in to fight them. And I was like, oh, my help. Mm, but then I got me some reward money. That's what I was trying. But I died. Of course. That's bad. It's just like, don't have any weapons or defenses, really. Just basic. Yeah, well... That's what we got. I don't know what else to say. I don't know what I... I don't... That you have not convinced me to buy it. Yeah, I... I, I, I from outside looking in... Yeah. $30, maybe. I, I feel like it's mildly disappointing right now. It's still good. I'm not upset that I bought the game. Mm-hmm. But it is mildly disappointing because I don't think it's really living up to the expectations that I had for it. Cool. Which is what I think you warned me about, like, six months ago when I was on the... Started getting on the No Man's Sky. You're like, this. there's no way it's going to be that good. The first time I saw this was my senior year in college. Yeah. So we graduated in 2014. Yeah. So that was two years ago. And my roommate is also the one that I live with when I play Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Um, he's like, look at this game. This game is incredible. You can essentially do whatever you want, wherever you want. If you want to, you can fly up to the galaxies. You can fly up down on Earth. If you want to create like a first person shooter, you can do that. And it's kind of, that's how it was marketed at the very mm-hmm. beginning. I'm like, there's no way that game's going to be anything. You can't They're, do that much. Everyone was so excited about it when it first mm-hmm. came out. And I was like, there's no way. And that's probably the pessimist in me. I like to call it the realist in me. Mm-hmm. I like to look at things pragmatically, logically and be like, there's no way that's going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I guess I could be, I feel kind of happy that I didn't get burned on this game, but at the same yeah. time I'm like apathetic. I'm just like, yeah. You know, I think this would be a prime time for me to let you borrow one of my games. No Man's Sky. Not like right now, literally. Once I'm done with it. Because I borrow your games all the time, but you barely borrow my games. Except for Valkyria Chronicles, which you had for so long. I borrowed twice. I didn't have it that long. I thought you had it forever. No, I gave it back. I thought you had it for like a year. Mm, I might have had it over summer. I think, you, yeah, I thought you did. I have your Mass Effect 2 right there. Oh, yeah. That's been there for how long now? Since after we started the podcast. It was when I first wanted to get Witcher 3. 
You want to give it to me? Uh, I gave yeah. you Metal Gear Solid Five, which I don't have bad back, back by the way. Yeah, it's in my room. Uh, <laughs> I can't complain about you borrowing <laughs> games. That's just not fair. Uh, I'm man. gonna buy the Uncharted collection before I borrow No Man's Sky. Yeah, I feel like I was gonna say I was gonna talk about something else. Rebel Galaxy. Well, yeah, no, I really don't want to talk about that. I just really that's a pre- that was it's a like PS in game. It's like a secret pleasure I have that I don't want anybody to know about. It's free on PSN. It's free on PSN. I played it, Rebel and I Galaxy. looked at it, and I'm like, Justin doesn't really like this. It reminds me of what I picture as Eve. It, it does remind me of Eve a little bit. Uh, a little less complicated. Yes. Way less complicated. But it's fun. You just, like, build your ship, and you go fight pirates, or be a pirate, whichever one you want, which yeah. sounds exactly like Eve. I just couldn't. I couldn't get into it. It was too much, it probably, too for much you. But it was, like, too much distance between things. I was like, yeah. I'm really low level, so I can't do anything, and it's, I was not about it. It was also one of those times where I just didn't want to invest... Into learning a new game. Mm-hmm. You know what that's like. Sometimes you just want to play something you're familiar with. Yeah. Which is why I play Destiny. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Overwatch has been fun. Oh, we're going to talk about Overwatch. Yeah, that's, I think that was As soon as you're done with this, I'm going to cook dinner. We're going to play Overwatch. Tonight. Yeah, we're both going to play Overwatch tonight. Uh, been loving it. I got it. Oh, I got some video birthday. clips last night. Mm-hmm. So I'll probably upload this to YouTube. Oh, yeah. I have the No Man's Sky video. I haven't up- I haven't up- You also it. have the rest of the Star Fox videos to finish. <laughs> Do I have the rest of those? They took up 32 gigs on my Did work, you get rid of them? My work computer, oh, and then my awesome. work computer ran out of space. Dang. All right, so, so if you're really invested in the Star Fox <laughs> on the Wii U series, <laughs> that's probably not you can watch happen. the Ratchet and Clank series, because that's complete. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whoops. So you have No Man's Sky. We're going to do... We're going to We're going to do our classic... Uh, we're not very good at. Yeah, that's we're not good at series. That's our good. Which is essentially our first impressions of a game. Of a game, we pick it up and play it. Really like. So maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe I'll play it, and we'll talk about it. Oh yeah, no, that's a great. Series. That's a great way to do it because then I can actually give you a little bit of guidance yeah. on how it, the game works. Um, I have Overwatch gameplay that mm-hmm. I might upload tomorrow. Um, it's me playing as McCree and May. Mm-hmm. I got like a twelve kill streak with May, which is awesome. That's what's up. Um. Which isn't that awesome, but I was pretty. I was happy with it because I'm still learning her. She's yeah. she's she's the devil. May. Yeah. I freaking hate May. She's Every awesome. time I see May, I run away. She's awesome. I don't even want to deal with you right now. See May, run away. See that works. Yep. People call her May as May. I agree. She's yeah. fantastic. I snipe people. She's from good if you're good with May. You snipe people. I'm really bad awesome. with May. I anyway. tried once and it was a bad experience. So thumbs up for Overwatch. When we, when Overwatch was first announced, I said, I don't know if Blizzard should be charging $60 for this. Yeah, we played the beta, and we're like, dude, there's not enough content. There's all just multiplayer. That's it. <laughs> that was the voice that we used to. No. Um, they've added one character. There's rumors of two more characters coming. Mm-hmm. Um, if it's all free, that's cool. Um, however, however, mm-hmm. on the very back of the game case, I believe it says, you can purchase all content with in-game currency. Yeah. However, with the Olympic Games going on, they have released... Summer Games boxes, yeah. you can only get through those boxes. So you cannot pay the in-game currency, which is gold. Yeah. You can't buy any of these Summer Games content, oh, you which have to is get the skins right and stuff yeah. like that, without the box. I think you can probably buy the box with in-game currency. As for, I don't know. Actually, I don't think you can. You know, I have in-game currency, but I don't even know how to spend it. I was trying to figure that out last night. Do you just go to the Hero Collection, I believe it's called, and you can go to like skins oh, or it, okay. emotes or whatever. That makes sense. Like that. However, I can't ever... I have over a thousand gold. Mm-hmm. I can't ever commit to buying something because I know as soon as I get another box, it's going to be in there. Yep. Hit that duplicate. Although I got a really good Bastion skin. It's a steampunk skin for Bastion. Oh, that's pretty cool. However, Bastion's not as good as it used to be. Dude, Bastion is so maddening. I get so mad at Bastion so often. So and then I played like... as Bastion and I got a crazy kill streak yeah. and totally won the game for us. I was so happy. Yeah. I had a sick healer too. She was awesome. She kept me alive. And that's the thing. You're playing Tracer? Dude, I love Tracer, man. I'm She's playing as awesome. McCree recently. Yeah. Soldier I, 76 is my bread and butter. If I, I yeah, if I want to get a good, if I want to get something good going, I go to Soldier. If if I'm struggling with all with trying new characters, I go to Soldier 76. Is he 76 years old? He might be. Why is he 76? He's really old. Uh, there's not a lot of background on these characters. You have to listen to what they say, what, how they interact with other characters. Yeah. And in King's Row, mm-hmm. uh, at the very beginning, if you're on the attacking side, mm-hmm. uh. He, he's either talking to himself or he's talking to Anna, which is the new healer that's also an old lady. Mm-hmm. Um, and, he, and he's just like, with all the stuff they pump into me, I'm, I still feel young. So he's definitely old. Yeah, I know. Well, there's another thing. He's like, I'm getting too old for this. Yeah. He says that sometimes. He says that a lot, but clearly he's not. 
Yeah. Well, I saw that he white hair, and I thought I saw in the intro video him as one of the people in the original Overwatch. Mm-hmm. He is. And he's in the front, but he doesn't have the mask on. Yeah. But it looks kind of like him, and he's holding the assault rifle. Yeah. And so I was like, maybe that's him. It is him. Oh, that makes sense. Then. But he has a big scar on his face now, so I don't know. Anyway, well, Overwatch is a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. If you like the underpaid gamers, there's a couple things you can do. Let them have it. You can send us an email at underpaidgamerspodcast at gmail.com. Yep. You can tweet at us at upgamers. Podcast. Podcast <laughs> on Twitter. You can join our Facebook group. Oh, I've we have one of those. Um, you can check out our Patreon page. Look at that if you want. You can check out underpaidgamers.com, leave a comment on one of our articles, or follow our blog. That's an option. Which get, we also have a predictions page. Though we're going to add a predictions page, because I'm always throwing out random predictions. Dude, he does. I want to see where if they have their stick. So far, I've been doing pretty good. Yep. We also have a YouTube channel. Yeah, we do. You can subscribe to that. Underpaid if you Gamers. just Google if you YouTube, Underpaid Gamers. You'll find us there. If you just Google underpaid gamers, we have a ton of stuff. We're like every link on the first yeah, page. We we got we own that. Yeah. Thanks, Google. What's up? We won't tell them that you're What's paying that? us. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, no. They're not paying us. We don't make any money. Um, <laughs> We're underpaid. Come on. iTunes, rate us and review, review us. us. Yeah, we'd love that. That helps out more than anything. Same thing on Google Play. Still helps. Yep. Yep. I think that's it. That's all I got. So thanks for listening. We'll see you guys next time. I think my favorite part about this episode was Pokemon Uranium. <laughs>